Hello and welcome to another video on Microsoft Fabric. And in today's video, I would like to experiment can One Lake Explorer can also act as ADLS Gen 2 Explorer. Now, One Lake Explorer is something which you can install on Windows and using that you can see your files and you can even upload the files. I've shown you if you update the file on Windows, it do get updated on the lake house. Now what I want here is basically, can I write the data to ADLS Gen 2? And the reason I am thinking about that because we have something known as shortcut and that shortcut can give us access to ADLS Gen 2. So in a lake house, I can create a shortcut and shortcut will give me access to ADLS Gen 2. And in the past we have seen using that shortcut, we were able to write down the files into ADLS Gen 2 not only read, we were able to write. So can we use this One Lake Explorer as ADLS Gen 2 Explorer? So now let's jump on to first on to the ADLS Gen 2 and I'm going to tell you the setup and what are the things I'm going to need. And then let's create a shortcut on fabric in a lake house. So let me open my ADLS Gen 2. In my portal.azure.com, what I have done is I have created a storage account. So you can click on a storage account and you can create a new storage account. I already have a storage account, Amit test account. I can click on this and you can see all the details about that. Now here what I have done is basically I have uh, created the containers and in the containers, I have this demo Amit container also. And inside the demo Amit container, I have few set of files which are already present and this is what I'm going to explore. Now to connect this with Microsoft Fabric, I require few details and those details are basically lying in my account. So I'm a test account. So two things which I required. One is I required the access point, the endpoint basically. In the endpoint, I'm going to use this data lake storage. This is what I'm going to use. And I would require the access keys. So I'll go here and I'll get the access keys from here and one of the access keys I need. So I'll, I'll use the first one. Now let's jump to the Microsoft fabric, which is nothing but app.powerbi.com. So we will go to our Microsoft fabric. My Microsoft fabric is already open, but let me it show you. So it is app.powerbi.com and I'm going to click on this workspace icon to open my workspace. And once I open my workspace, I need to go to a lake and the lake where I'm going, where I'm already testing this thing is Lake 03. So in the Lake 03, so I am now on the Lake House Explorer and in the Lake House Explorer, you will see that I have table and I have files. So inside the file three dots, I'm going to go ahead and say new shortcut, the first option. And I'll say Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Once I click on that, now I need the URL. What's my URL? URL I have to bring it from the endpoints. So I go here from the endpoint. I'll go ahead and copy this. DFS core. I'll copy this and let me bring this to my and the moment I do it will automatically give me the connections which are already created just for your reference. I'll say create new connection and instead of organization, I'll say account key and then I'll give the account key. Now again, I have to go to the the Azure portal and from Azure portal from my account storage account, I need the key and let me take that key. So I'll go to the access key show copy. Once I copied this key, I'll go back to my fabric where I'm doing this configuration. I'll see next and I can give it a name. So connection name I can give, let's say fabric short cut 
actually this is ADLS Gen 2 shortcut so I should call it ADLS Gen 2 shortcut okay next is going to ask my sub container so I'm going to say demo Amit and if the information is correct it's going to create that so demo Amit is the container if you have paid attention that's what I've shown to you I need to give a shortcut name that's how it's going to be displayed so I'm going to call it use ADLS 2 use ADLS 2 now if I come here if I click on the ADLS 2 now I'm able to view the files these are the same files we have seen there on the ADLS Gen 2 for your reference I'm going to open it again and show you the same files so same set of files are available at both the places now then as a next step I would like to go to my Windows Explorers and in the Windows I have already installed One Lake Explorer and in the One Lake Explorer I have already opened it so let me click on the One Lake Explorer so this is 01 fabric which was there let me first of all press sync it take little bit of time uh, to sync in a new folder uh, so let me open 01 fabric lake house 0 three files and it is still not displayed but it took like little bit time it has taken last time also I, I noticed that so now it has come use ADLS 2 now if you see in the later use ADLS 2 I can see all my files which are there so if you want to compare these are the file which are seeing here the couple of CSV files three folder and one parquet three folders couple of files and one parquet file now what we are going to do here is we will open one more explorer out here and from that explorer let's copy a file to the lake 3 use so let me show you the url use adls2 we have copied this file it has been synced now once it has been synced time has come that we go to lake 03 and refresh it and check it out so let me refresh and check it out so in the lake explorer i can see this item file and let me see how much data it is it is having 55 rows that's what i had let me go back now time has come that we go to azure storage and in the container let's refresh the container and see do we get the data now you can see I have item CSV and I'm going to click here right click on this one I've right clicked on the file and I'm going to click the download now because I don't want to use the viewer right now which I have not enabled and let me open this file and show you how much data I have and I'm going to do a few steps here okay now the file is already on ADLS Gen 2 with exactly same number of rows. Let me close this. Let me uncheck this. Now let me do one thing. Let me go back to the file explorer and I'm going to open this file item. And I'm going to add one row here. I can do that programmatically and I'm going to show you that programmatically will also add a file and see whether it's going to be there in the ADLS Gen 2 or not. Means we'll add to the file explorer only local copy and we'll see now 56 is the item num row 56 seventh row 56 is the item number 56 item name item 56 and I'm saving it let me close this it has been synced let me refresh and confirm that now what we can do is we can go to the lake 03 first and refresh it and in the lake 03 I am expecting that this file is already there so let me go to use ADLS2 and this file is already present and I am also expecting that this file should have 56 row so it has now I click back on the file I come out now we have seen the file in the lake house explorer now let's go to ADLS gen 2 and in the ADLS Gen 2, let me refresh this 
and let me download this file again. And once I download, I would like to open this file and check out, do I have 56 item or not? And let me scroll down. I have item 56. Now let me go ahead and do next operation. So I go to my file explorer again. In the ADLS Gen 2 shortcut, this is my ADLS Gen 2 shortcut, which is I'm using from the lake house. I'm going to go ahead and delete this file. So I'll press shift delete, shift delete, do not move it to the recyclement file permanently deleted, but you can use, simply use delete. Now it has been deleted. Let me press refresh. Let's see. I'm directly, I'm checking on ADLS Gen 2. Let me refresh and check. You don't have the file here. Let me also check on Microsoft Fabric Lakehouse Explorer. Do we have the file? And I go to use ADLS Gen 2. It's still showing it, but when we refresh it, it should go away from here. Now there is no file item 2. So we are managing ADLS Gen 2 from One Lake Explorer using the shortcut in the lake house. Pretty much satisfied with that. Data append is also happening, manual data append. But sometime you would like to do it programmatically. So instead of showing the complete flow, I'm just going to show you, I'm going to move one file here. So let me change this uh, folder name here uh, because previously I tested with another folder. So let me go here and use this folder name. Use ADLS2. So I have written a Python code, but this Python code is doing, and uh, let me explain you. So this Python code is nothing but it is using import as util and this is just an error handling to copy the file this is the copy file activity which needs a source path and destination path and here outside the function we are creating a source path and destination path and we are calling this function so we created a function and we are just calling that function with two parameters i can simply call shutil.copy and can give the urls here it is going to be a one line code one line for input another line for this one now let me go to run on the top and say run without debugging. It's opening, it's running and the file is successfully copied. The message is file is successfully copied. So let's go to the explorer, the one lake explorer and see the order two is there. Now let's go to the lake house explorer on the fabric, refresh, and we see order.2. Now let's go to the ADLS Gen 2, refresh, and order.csv is there. So now you have programming language under your control. You do whatever you want it to do. Try and explore what else you can do. So now our One Lake Explorer is also ADLS Gen 2 Explorer. So why don't you go ahead and try this out and do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series thanks for watching this video thank you